Now the next important thing we need to understand about the OSPF is uh, the concept of areas. Now what is areas? Now in this section what we'll see is we'll see what is the concept of areas and then why we need an areas and areas concept and how what are the different kinds of rules when you are designing the network into areas. So the major thing what we have seen in the previous session like in the OSPF stages process where we have seen all the routers are going to maintain the same database that that's one of the one of the thing you need to know that's what we have seen in the previous session where every router is going to maintain each and every possible route information for each and every destination but that is a major problem in OSPF and especially if you are running a very big size networks I got a I got my head office here connecting to some branch offices and then connecting to small small branch offices let me take down somewhat easy diagram here so let's say I got a head office connecting to some of the branch offices and then again in turn these branch offices are connecting to most of the branch offices again here so something like this let's assume that we got some uh, branch offices here and similar way here also so I got a very big network let's say assume that I got some 200 plus routers connecting in my network now in case of OSPF the more bigger the network you have the more general issues come across in case of OSPF now what are those issues generally now one of the first issue will be like all the routers especially come with these small routers now these small routers what happens here is these small routers are typically your 1700 1800 series routers mostly your access level series routers which do not have enough memory and the enough processing capabilities now these routers is um, running out of memory because now the, now the condition what we have seen what we have discussed in in our previous cases is if you just get back all the routers maintain the same database now which means now whatever the database maintained by these small routers your small routers is going to be the same what this distribution routers are going to maintain and the core routers are going to maintain so most likely these core routers do not have an issue maintaining a, such a big database because they have enough processing and memory capabilities and so distribution layer also might be they, they, they can easily manage that but the problem come with the small routers your access level routers they, they are going to say that probably uh, these routers will face an issue that they, they say I'm running out of memory so that's what they will say you can see here uh, it says my routing table and my database table is too big and I'm running out of memory I don't have enough resources to process them and if your router is not having enough resources so it can reboot most of the times or it can go down and in, if that happens in that case uh, you we will not see the communication generally happen so we don't want this kind of issues so this, this general problem we have your database table or or your uh, majorly your database table that the, these routers do not have enough memory feature uh, capabilities to maintain such a big database table especially in your big networks and these routers distribution level routers also will face some problems like like SPF is running too many algorithms so, so the major problem with this with these routers here will be they say that my algorithm runs too many times now this router says that uh, because normally what happens is whenever there is a change whenever there is a change it's going to update all the routers which means let's say there is a new network is added here now who will come to know first the neighbor router and what this router will do he says there is a change change update update it's going to update all the routers so that all the routers can update their own database and then to this router it's going to update the database and then this router to this router and then to this router and then to everyone so whenever there is a small change is happening like maybe the interface goes down maybe the new router is added or maybe maybe the router is rebooted it's going to it's going to send an update to each and every router to update the database because they must have the synchronized database on all the routers so each time there is a change in the network it's going to send the update which means it's going to run the algorithm also too many times so it says I'm receiving too many advertisements too many advertisements that is one of the problem here and also the core routers also can come across the issue like it says I'm running too many algorithms 
because every time there is a change in the database, change in the best routes, it has to run some algorithms and then cal recalculate the best routes. That's something uh, what generally happens in case of big networks with OSPF. Now these are some of the general problems what OSPF faces when it comes to big size networks. Okay, so that's what that's what you can see here. Uh, it says the most of these routers says I'm receiving too many LSS link shared advertisements, and the core router says my SPF algorithm is running too many times. So okay, and then the access level routers do not have enough memory uh, capabilities to maintain such a big table, a database or routing tables. So what's the solution for this? Now this is the problem, and we need a solution to fix this. And the solution is the concept of OSPF areas. So there is a con there is a concept of OSPF areas where we are going to group logically these routers into one group, into one group, and then this is also one group, something like this. Now, what is the benefit we get in grouping the areas? Now, grouping is nothing but it's a logical grouping where we combine multiple routers into one group. And we give some numbers like area 10, area 20, area 30, and then area 0. I'll come to this numbering again. Now, what is the advantage we get? The major advantage is we, we are going to solve all the problems what we have just discussed. Now, if you remember, what we have discussed is all the routers are going to maintain the same database. Right? That's what we have discussed. All the routers are going to maintain the same database but it will be within the area it will be within the area which means now this router is going to maintain the database of only the routers within the same area but not the other area databases so which means the first problem is solved so the database database is reduced the size of the database is reduced because it is now made within specific area only and these routers they don't maintain anything other area information so the first problem is solved and the next problem is uh, was like any change happens it's going to update all the routers right now if any change happens in this area let's say the new network is added the router will ensure that they advertise to all the routers within the same area and and all these routers within the area will participate in the algorithm so they only participate in the algorithm and also the advertisement is sent within the same area and it's not going to disturb the other areas. Okay. And then whatever the final change or the best routes will be exchanged outside the area. So which means the other area routers, they are not participating in the algorithm. They are not they are not receiving any advertisements whenever there is a change. So, so that, that's something what areas uh, is going to help us. So areas helps in minimizing, uh, minimizing uh, or reducing these problems. We can say it minimizes the size of the database by just making it within the specific area, and it's going to restrict the changes within the area only. Any changes happens, it will go within the same area, and the routers within the same area only will participate in the algorithm without disturbing the other areas. So OSPF hierarchical design, that's what we call as uh, areas concept is going to solve the problem of of this one but again there are some conditions we need to follow like the condition is uh, let's say let's say, let, let me discuss the conditions let's take an example these are the routers and Cisco recommends not to use more than 40 to 50 routers in one area okay that's that's something generally we follow as per the recommendation not to use more than 50 40 50 routers in single area so which means if you have 200 plus routers it's recommended to have at least three to four areas. So here I'm making four areas here. Okay, that's the first condition we need to follow. And the next condition is, uh, we need to ensure that area zero should be at the center. Area zero should be the backbone area. So when you are giving some numbering, we can give any number from one to, I think somewhere a big number. We can give any number from zero here. In fact, we can start from zero. But area 0 should be the back one. We can give any number like 1, 2, 3 or 10, 20, 30, whatever the numbers. Okay. So we can give the area numbers. But the condition is if area 1, uh, uh, in, in this, now area 0, 
will be referred as a backbone area we call it as a backbone area zero whatever the area zero we call as backbone area and then the remaining areas we call them as non backbone areas non backbone means other than backbone now these non backbone areas they cannot communicate directly with each other they cannot communicate with each other because the area one router this router want to talk to this router you cannot say that there is a short route i'll go from here directly you cannot you have to go via area 0 so the transit should be area 0 which means area 0 should be at the backbone or it should be a transit so all the non backbone areas they should communicate with each other only via area 0 so there's a mandatory rule we need to follow so area 0 should be at the backbone so when you are designing these are the mandatory rules we need to keep in mind when you are designing so area 0 should be the transit or backbone we can say there's a one more rule we need to follow and the third rule is like um, the third rule is there must be at least one area border router there, mu there must be some one area border router now in this this router referred as abr area border router now why we call it as area border router because this router is is going to be a member of more than one area like you can see this area as well as this area and this router is responsible for exchanging the routes from one area to another area and this router is responsible for participating in the algorithm of both areas and also it's going to maintain the database of both areas and then this area this router is uh, responsible for exchanging the routes between the two areas now there must be at least one area border router uh, as per the design mandatory at least one or you can have more than one also i can say one plus you can have more than one also but minimum you must have at least one area border router like here also i got this router is area border router and this router is area border router which belongs to both the areas generally so the router which belongs to both the areas or connecting on the border we call it as area border router you must have at least one area border router so there's a one more rule we need to follow like here you can see uh, i got the same rules here area is a logical grouping of the routers that's what i discussed and recommended not to use more than 40 to 50 routers in one single area and all the routers must maintain the same database but it will be within the area and any changes is going to impact only the routers within the same area now the rules which we discussed just now uh, area zero should be the backbone area which means if i'm designing any any areas I need to ensure that area 0 should be at the backbone. And if I design anything, something like this, area 30, which is not connecting to the backbone here, this area will not receive the routes. Also, the, the other area routes will not come here. So it's almost like nothing you, if, you do, if, you do, if you don't design as per the rules. Now, there should be at least one area border router. And there's one more rule when you're designing, ensure that the interfaces facing these two must be in the same area. Uh, there's something more on this we'll, we'll see when we come to the lab, practical implementation. So these are the mandatory things we need to, uh, we need to keep in mind when we are designing the areas. So let us just discuss some of the advantages of the OSPF. Now OSPF, it's a standard protocol, no hop limitations, low free, faster convergence like uh, by default, it will take somewhere around 40 seconds. I got some information. I think I missed some of the few points. If you just get back, so it's going to use 224.005 for sending an updates. It's a faster convergence protocol. By default, it is going to send hello packets for every 10 seconds, and if there is no hello for 40 seconds, it will start calculating the alternate route, and the updates will be sent only whenever there is a change. So that's, that's those are the features of OSPF, and then uh, and then finally we'll discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages like uh, no hub limitations, low free protocol, and faster convergence. So, but the major disadvantage is it it utilizes more resources for maintaining the band, maintaining the database, and and for 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 maintaining a link state information of each and every possible route. So we need to have a proper designing. So, and the, even the designing is a little bit complicated here. It supports equal cost load balancing. It's not a big disadvantage, but EHRP supports unequal cost also. 
and it doesn't support ipx this kind of things anyway we don't use them so i cannot say that this is a big disadvantage we can say and this is also not a big disadvantage but the main disadvantage with the ospf is it's a little bit more complex to configure complex to design implement it and uses some of the more cpu resources in maintaining the database generally